Here we have some warm oil. And here we have some really cold oil. It's pretty easy to notice the difference. And your airplane feels the difference as well. Cold oil is just one of the challenges when trying to start a cold stoked engine. The temperatures are going down, it's chilly outside. It can be really hard to start a carbureted engine. We were going to a very important football game in Indianapolis a couple of years ago. And coming from Atlanta, going to Indianapolis, I started watching the weather and it was gonna be cold. Not icing or snowing or anything like that, just really cold, like nine degrees Fahrenheit cold. So I knew getting there wasn't gonna be a problem, but I was really nervous about the next day, starting that cold engine. I tried to get a, a heated hanger, it was too busy, too crowded, that didn't work. I made every mistake you could possibly make in trying to start a cold carbureted engine. Hopefully you can learn from the mistakes I made. And if you don't watch any more of this video, if you just remember one thing about a cold engine, the best way to start it is to preheat the engine. Both Wycoming and Continental have cold weather starting procedures that they recommend. So certainly follow those and follow the instructions of your airplane manufacturer. So starting a cold engine can be difficult. We're going to get into that. But what most people don't know is it can be really harmful to the engine as well. When you try to start an engine that's cold, the tolerances between the surfaces within the, within the engine are smaller you have a much greater chance of scraping or scuffing those internal surfaces, which could lead to premature engine wear and possibly a sooner engine teardown. Renowned AMT, Mike Bush, has written several books. He's done many, many webinars and hosts a podcast as well. Mike says the same thing in his books, his webinars, his podcasts. If you try to start an engine below 32 degrees Fahrenheit without preheating, that's a misdemeanor. Below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a felony you're gonna do some serious damage to your airplane engine. Without preheating an engine, there are several mistakes that pilots make. All right, the first mistake is not just about the engine, but it's about prop safety. There's a myth going around that if you turn the prop over by hand, you're gonna lubricate the surfaces within the engine. That myth also says that, well, you can turn the prop through by hand forwards or backwards, and it doesn't matter as long as you get some of that oil lubricating the surfaces within the engine. Well, at those temperatures, the oil isn't like oil, it's more like honey or molasses. Pulling the prop through by hand does absolutely nothing to increase your chances of starting that cold airplane engine. Not only that, it's super dangerous. If there's any issue with the airplane's ignition system, maybe a P-lead is disconnected or the mags were left inadvertently on and you pull that prop through by hand, that's a very serious situation. Under no circumstance should you be pulling the prop through by hand. If you like this kind of content, I'd really appreciate a like, a subscribe. I uh, appreciate it. All right, the second mistake is really pilots not knowing the fuel air mixture that they need to start an engine when it's cold. If you're starting a typical training airplane, like coming 0360, during standard temperature days or warm temperature days, you might crack the throttle a half inch or so, maybe less. We have to remember that the throttle controls the air part of the fuel air mixture. So on a cold day, the air is much more dense, so less air is needed. So if you use a half inch in the summertime, maybe a quarter of inch in the wintertime. All right, the next two issues revolve around priming. And I know that some airplanes don't have a primer and the procedures for that are different than what we're talking about. So if you have or fly an airplane without a traditional primer system, just follow your airplane and engine manufacturer recommendations for starting. So the first mistake around priming is just not knowing how much primer you need. When the air is cold, you're typically going to need more fuel to start. That depends on the temperature, the aircraft, the engine. It's a really good idea to keep notes that given certain temperature conditions, how many primer strokes it takes to get the airplane to start. That way you take some of the guesswork out when you come back to start it again on a similar day later. So if we're talking about priming, the next mistake is if you need extra fuel when it's cold, then why not a little extra, extra fuel? Shouldn't that help? That certainly doesn't help. That just creates an overprime situation and that fuel is going to go somewhere, and that creates a fire hazard. So let's not overprime. The next mistake around starting a cold engine is just being impatient with the starting process when it's cold. A lot of pilots will start pumping the throttle to just encourage the airplane to do something. You've got passengers waiting, and you want that engine to catch. So you've got to do some of that pilot stuff, right? And depending on the engine, that pumping of the throttle may put some of the fuel where it needs to go, but it's a far less efficient system than the primer system. It's also worth noting if you try to pump the throttle either before you start or while you're starting, that fuel 
could drain back down into, into the in, intake box. And if there's a backfire, that's a recipe for a fire. So if you have a primer and it's probably serviced, use that instead. Another mistake that I've made and other, I've seen other pilots make is they don't understand the components of the airplane and how they change during the winter. Batteries are colder. Starters are colder. Everything is not in tip-top condition when it's so cold out there. So what's the solution to all this? Really, you need to do all that you can to preheat your engine, your airplane, the oil, everything. That'll make the starting process so much easier. After my failed attempt to start our engine on that cold day in Indianapolis, we stuck it in the hangar for a couple hours and then brought it out and it started right up. So that's really the way to go. Get your airplane warm. And once you do get the airplane started, be sure to follow your manufacturer's guidelines on cold weather operations. Hope you like this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Stay flying.